Do you guys know what red flags are? I'm not talking about flags of um, the former Soviet Union or the powder rag the Navy uses to signal live fire shooting or combat. I'm talking about red flag laws that have to deal with firearm possession and ownership. So before I get started on the discourse about that, couple terminologies that you need to know, like ERPO and TERPO, which are Extreme Risk Protection Order or Temporary Extreme Risk Protection Order, um, or ERFPOs, which are Extreme Risk Firearms Protection Orders, um, or GVROs, which is Gun Violence Restraining Order. The most common term is going to be ERPO or TERPO. Every state I shouldn't say every state. Depending on the state you're in, the terms vary. The effect is essentially the same. So what this involves, um, and and this was all ultimately predicated by mass shootings um, and increasing gun violence. So in, in effect, the law allows for somebody meaning a family member or somebody in that household or law enforcement officer meaning police and in some states teachers district attorneys and i think state attorney generals can all file under the red flag law now what does this allow you to do well It allows you to get the firearms out of a house if you think there's a person there that's at risk of harming themselves or um, being a danger to other people and there are guns around. So it's a simple way to remove firearms from a household. Um, Now, how do you do that? You can't just walk out and go, I think he's a crazy SOB and I want the guns gone. And it's funny because in the beginning, that's exactly what was happening. You'd have a um, jackass for a neighbor who was anti-gun and said, uh, all right, let's uh, get rid of the guns. Here's an easy way to do it. But what you need to do is actually file a written statement. Now, the police can do it. You can do it, whatever. And I actually found online in New York and Maryland, they actually have an online PDF. You can fill it out. You have to detail in a lot of these cases um, why you think they're a danger to themselves. Have they been threatening self-harm? Have they been threatening to harm others? Um, What is their mental health status? Are they uh, substance abusers or alcoholics? Do they have a criminal background? And so, under those auspices, you can file the documents. And typically what happens is, in fact, this has to be a court order. Um, The cops can't just show up and take the guns away. I mean, obviously, if you're handling the guns in an unsafe manner while the police are around, I'd imagine you'd lose the guns and probably get arrested in that order. Um, however, they have to document it. It has to be something that would pass a judge's muster. And then what they would do is issue the TERPO, the Temporary Extreme Risk Protection Order. Once that goes into place, I think the guns have to be surrendered in, um, every state I looked at it was within 24 hours. And within one to three weeks and again it varies by state so feel free you know check your own state's red flag laws so um they have to have a formal hearing now this is where it gets weird at the initial for the temporary if the judge finds there's cause there is no due process the judge passes the order You have to surrender the guns and you um, are restricted from buying guns 
and they will even notify the FBI, NICS, you know, the National Instant Crime Check, the things a gun dealer would have to use to verify your ability to own a firearm. Um, so right there, there is an immediate halt to things. So if you were charged with a crime, you get to, you know, hear the evidence. You get to, you know, provide a counter to whatever's being presented, meaning you get to defend yourself. And you're going, all right, why are we talking about this? Well, right now, 19 states and the District of Columbia currently have red flag laws. And so it's, you know, worth paying attention to. And, you know, the funny thing is everyone's going, well, the Republicans, you know, stopped it. Uh, Seven of those 19 states are Republican states. And they're saying the NRA blocked it. Um, No, they really didn't. Um, And I'm not a big fan of the NRA. Um, However, the NRA says it fundamentally supports the concept behind red flag laws. Their concern is based on how they're being implemented. So there are, you know, issues related to that. Uh, and part of the you know concerns that are cropping up is that there's no way to quantify the success of the red flag laws actually doing anything. Uh, case in point, every one of the mass shooters has not ever been involved with red flag laws. No one's ever filed a complaint. Um, there were two studies, and. Uh, I'm blocking on what states. I think Connecticut might have been one of them. And I forgot the other one. So, I mean, you can go look that up if you want. Um, They showed that for every 10 to 20 red flag laws or ERPOs put into effect, one less person committed suicide. Um, I don't know how you quantify that aspect, but... There is some evidence that does, in fact, show that suicide rates are down because of red flag laws. So you can take that, you know, with a grain of salt if you'd like. Now, the other thing that's, you know, some other interesting data is people that are attempting to commit suicide and people that are threatening to go shoot up schools typically announce what they're doing before they do it. Social media being a big one, somebody walking up saying, I'm going to go blow my brains out. I've had it with life. They're telegraphing what they're going to do. And even in red flag states, none of those people were red flagged. Um, so is it of some utility? Yeah, I mean, if I had a crazy person living in my house, I'd want to make sure they couldn't get access to guns. Um, Okay, so let's go back to our timeline. So a a TERPO, a temporary order is put in place. Within 24 hours, you have to surrender guns. The statistics say 91% of the people cooperated fully because they didn't have guns. So they had no problem surrendering their guns because they didn't exist. Um, Okay. Then within that one to three week period, while the temporary order is in place, they have to have the full hearing. And this is one where you're allowed to present evidence or challenge the um, validity of, of having that extreme risk protection order. So at that point, you're entitled to some sort of due process. Um, Now, here's something interesting that has, you know, come up. And And this has been over the procedural issues. Um... So if the restraining order is deemed to be effect... to be necessary... 
um, you now have between one and five years without your guns. Um, typically, it's most states it's one year. Some have codicils that let them extend it. Um, and then we talk about the procedural issues. We're talking about uh, things like who gets to make that determination. A police officer is not trained to make a mental health determination. And some of the courts have been putting out um, that a physician needs to be involved in this. And the other part is, the other, the other procedural aspect is, you're taking the guns away without due process, but there already is a process in virtually every state under the mental hygiene or mental health laws. A lot of states have ones where if, you know, law enforcement officers, for example, um, have determined that you might be a serious risk to yourself or other people, um, they can send you or have you taken to the hospital for a mental hygiene or mental health evaluation. And they can keep you there up to 72 hours. Now, if you are already agitated, I can't imagine being um, involuntarily admitted to a hospital or incarcerated in a hospital, if you want to view it that way, as uh, helping your mental state. So that brings us to the other part. And you guys are going to kind of hopefully um, sit there in shock when I just tell you this. Um, I'm recording this December 31st, 2022. On December 29th or 30th, a judge declared the ERPOs unconstitutional. And you'll die when I tell you the state. Well, I hope you don't really die. And if you are going to die with a gun, let me know and I'll file the complaint so you guys can uh, lose your firearms. New York State Supreme Court Justice said that the ERPO was unconstitutional um, under the Second and Fourth Amendment. Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms. And yes, I know the sentence isn't finished, you know, in an organized militia. Um, but it evolved over some boyfriend, I think with a live-in girlfriend, who in New York State had a concealed carry permit. Those are incredibly difficult to get in New York. So clearly this woman had jump through all of the hoops to get this thing done. And so the boyfriend reported that she was going to harm herself or harm somebody else. So the police came, they got a turpo, they got the guns, and the woman brought a lawsuit. And so under the Second Amendment, they deprived this woman of her right to keep and bear arms. Under the Fourth Amendment, illegal search and seizure... There was no probable cause established. And, and this is where a lot of these laws are coming under fire now is you're tromping over people's civil rights. In fact, the judge even noted that they were depriving this woman of her right to life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. And, you know, on a sidebar, I hope she moved the hell out of that house because that boyfriend is at the very least crazier than she might have been. So the other statistics is something like between 70 and 77 percent of all the people surveyed, and I don't know the size of the population, I think it was 70 percent of the people surveyed believe that police should have the right to do the um, ERPO, the removing the firearms, and 77% believe that a family member should be able to trigger it. So, we now have, you know, constitu I shouldn't say we now have, we've had constitutional issues related to this. And we've got major procedural issues. You have unqualified people making a determination of somebody's mental state. Now, I mean... 
I'm not trained as a mental health professional, but if I see somebody running around out in the street waving a gun, I'm going to go, maybe we need to look at that. Um, but then throwing in...